The Dead Space 2 speedrunning community has discovered many new strategies, glitches, and time saves in the past two years, bringing the game down from two hours to nearly one, cutting the run clean in half. With this sort of scientific revolution happening, lots of things are going to change. All games have a sort of meta game. Whether it's basketball, CSGO, or Dead Space speedrunning, there emerges an optimal or current strategy that dominates the current state of play. Naturally, when playing it becomes evident what the most efficient method of playing is, and players are intrinsically drawn to playing with that method specifically. It's actually a really commonly known phenomenon. More than this, players will actually do this method because it is more efficient, even to the detriment of their own enjoyment. Often players will optimize the fun out of the game, removing the mechanical or strategic challenges from their way, all because of their desire to play efficiently. This can be seen clearly in a game like XCOM, where players will often do something called save scumming, where they save and reload saves over and over again until they get the result that they want. Rerolling random events until you get the result that you want defeats the purpose of them being random in the first place, and the process for doing so can be very boring and frustrating. But once players know that they can do it, it's often hard for them to not do it. Even in games like XCOM, where they knew that this was going to happen, and have actually made it so it won't work. Certainly doesn't stop people from trying, though. The thing that's interesting about this is that the urge to employ strategies like this that suck the fun out of the game when playing casually is entirely intrinsic. People just want to do it. Nothing that is forcing them to do so. The story is a little bit different when it comes to competitive endeavors, however. When a metagame emerges in a competitive game, there really isn't any option other than to just go with it. For example, in CSGO, there have been several meta shifts that have come from the developers rebalancing the game or introducing new guns. When the R8 revolver was added into CSGO, it was so brokenly overpowered it undermined the game's entire existing meta. Instead of the normal fun way of playing, everyone just bought the R8 and used it exclusively every single round. It was so strong, it was better than every other gun in the game. And if you wanted to be competitive in the couple of days that this was occurring, you literally had to be using the R8. This could be fun for short periods of time, but if this stayed the meta long term, it certainly would have completely killed CSGO as a competitive esport. The same thing can happen in speedruns. When a game is going through a ton of discoveries, it's a fun and exciting time. New time saves are always good, right? Isn't the point to go fast? Well, sort of. You see, when a new discovery is found, especially big ones that save multiple minutes, they can completely change the meta of the speedrun. Some metas are really fun and very competitive, and others are really toxic, going against the competitive nature of the run itself. Each and every discovery has the potential to shift the meta in a way that is different from what is currently optimal. And because the goal of the speedrun is to go as fast as possible, if a strategy is faster, it must be done, or you simply won't be able to be competitive. So while yes, the whole point of speedrunning is to go fast, you would hope that any new discovery would make the speedrun more fun and competitive as well as faster. But unfortunately, this isn't always the case. With Dead Space 2 making so many new discoveries over the last two years, there's been lots of new metas emerging, some more fun than others. And no part of the run has been more emblematic of the shifts occurring than the first chapter of the game. In the speedrun itself, a lot of the times throughout the history of the game, the early game has been either very extremely punishing or just not very fun to do. Because you have to do this at the start of every single run, it can kind of kill the speedrun for a lot of people. In some instances, this can be solved by creating different categories that don't have you doing certain things, like specific glitches or certain sections of the game. However, in Dead Space 2, no matter what we thought of, we couldn't find a way to make it fun. And trust me, we certainly tried. And as history shows, if you try for long enough, you might actually get there. This is the story of how we saved Dead Space from being a dead speedrun. In the very beginning, the game was played as normally as possible. Loading into a new game, you immediately launch into a 3 minute and 40 second cutscene, before you gain control of Isaac. 
After the therapy you receive for the endless resets, going into a long ass cutscene, you have your hands tied in a straitjacket, and you can only run through the halls and into this door, where you then do a QTE that makes your mom hate Dead Space 2. Then you continue on your way down the House of Horrors. Once through the pacing reset, you run into Edgar, who reminds you that your rig is red and so are your splits. He promptly gives you the most powerful gun in the game and sprays ketchup all over the walls. Then once downstairs, you can't see anything except for how fast you're going when you run directly over these tables at high FPS. Then once into the vent, we crawl our way into the operating room, getting some brain damage on the way in. We go into the janitor's storage booth, kick out the door hinge loose, and rip out the 4 inch screws. This is for every time you took my orange juice. Getting revenge on the necromorphs with our newfound kinesis, we wait for the elevator and then head into another surgery room where we neglect a patient. You! You! Thank God! Please, come help me! Killing him. Because we spot something that we can MacGyver into a plasma cutter. Then, through a few of the loudest rooms of all time, we head into this section where we meet Strauss, who gets away just before us and leaves the room locked full of necromorphs. After we clear them out, we head into the next room where we get stasis. Now that we have stasis to freeze enemies and kinesis to throw objects, we've almost completed our transcendence into being a superhero. We just need our super suit. After killing a few more necros, we arrive at the shop and we buy our suit, equipping it like we were Iron Man with all the depression and none of the money. Finally, we arrive at the first boss fight, where we kill the tripod in like 6 shots because it's uneasy, and running clean past him. Once we crawl through the vent, we arrive in chapter 2 in about 14 minutes. One of the most detrimental things that a speedrun can do if it wants to have an active and competitive community is have a long, unskippable introduction. After attempting to get a run going and having it die at some point later in the game, you have to start over and try again. And adding an additional 3 minutes and 40 seconds of just waiting before you can try again is really annoying and frustrating. Especially if games have hard or complicated techniques right at the start of the run. Thankfully, at the time, Dead Space did not have any of those, but it still did make the run really unfun to reset since the introduction cutscene didn't have any skill involved, as it was literally just waiting for 4 minutes, the community decided to allow the use of a mod to skip the cutscene and start the game right as you control Isaac for the first time. Initially, it was proposed that we could start from the first save location, shortly down the hallway from the start of the game. But this would skip some actual gameplay and not just the cutscene. For a time, this was allowed until Arsis found out that you can use a hex editor to modify the game's executable. If you do it correctly, you can change what checkpoint the game loads when you select New Game. It turns out, the game actually has a checkpoint that is right after you gain control of Isaac. So by rewriting the code a little bit, you can skip the introduction cutscene without skipping anything that you could possibly lose time on. This greatly improved the quality of life for the runners and made the run a much more fast-paced experience. Now that the intro was removed, that cut 3.5 minutes from the first chapter, bringing it down to 12 minutes and 30 seconds. For a long time, the first chapter was really stagnant. No new discoveries, completely vanilla, until a discovery that could potentially break the entire game in half was discovered inside that very chapter. After you pick up the flashlight, you can do what is called flashlight duplication. By bringing up the tutorial for restoring health, you can duplicate the flashlight. When you do this, it actually spawns another flashlight in the locker where you initially pick it up. This alone doesn't actually do anything, till you realize that it can break you out of any animation, including cutscenes. This means that you could use it to skip every cutscene in the game, and break many scripted sequences. This glitch would completely shatter the speedrun, saving tens of minutes all by itself. Or you would think it would. Unfortunately, as it turns out, this is extremely limited. It COULD do all these things, but it is limited by a few factors. If you do it after you get Kinesis, it actually removes Kinesis from your abilities. This could softlock you in many locations where you really do need Kinesis to do puzzles and just generally progress. It also only works if the locker you grab the flashlight in is loaded in. And once you leave Chapter 1, it's permanently deloaded. It does have its uses though, 
There are a few small animation skips you can do by this event, saving about 10 seconds total. So far, nothing has changed except minor things and quality of life changes, but soon something big was coming. Something that would stagnate the progression of Dead Space speedrunning in a big way. Something named Steve. This is Steve. Steve is the single most important necromorph in the entire game. He's the secret to skipping multiple sections in the first chapter, and here is how. As it turns out, with the discovery of room deloading, which you can learn more about from this video, you can push Steve into this hallway and let the door close. Once you two are alone, he gets paralyzed by fear, waiting for you to make the first move. He'll be stuck here forever as his AI just completely breaks since he isn't supposed to be in this room. Once that happens, he can be pushed all the way down this hallway into the plasma cutter room, and then into the next room and can be used to hold open the door. Because the door is forced to open by Steve holding it open, it causes the rooms to load incorrectly, triggering a level 2 deload. From here, you can walk in the pitch black navigating from room to room. This allows you to skip the forced fight in this really loud room, and into the room where you have to kill a bunch of necromorphs while Strauss runs away. Normally, when you fight this room, it's random where the enemies spawn, and the player can lose upwards of 20 seconds if they get really bad spawns. It was actually a huge reset point, because in a game like Dead Space 2, 20 seconds is a huge margin, especially for the very start of the run. The doorway for this section actually was level 3 deloaded, however, which means that it's completely gone besides the doors and the checkpoints. This means if you tried to walk into this room, you would just fall infinitely and then get stuck. What we figured out though is if you use the super precise setup by lining up with some of the objects in the background, you could do a stomp launch off the edge and pause buffer the game while spamming door open inputs, catching the exit door to the quarantine room, triggering it to load the level around you as you fall. This saves you and skips the quarantine fight entirely. This strategy saves over an entire minute, but there was one issue. It was super, super hard. Not only was pushing Steve nearly across the entire map jank, but it was also really hard and super slow. Not to mention, the setup was super precise. Most runs died to the skip. You could do attempts of the speed run for days on end and only get a few of them past this first skip. And it was mandatory for having a good time. It saves so much time, in fact, that you simply had to go for it. But it was just so toxic. We needed to find a better and more consistent and hopefully faster version of this skip if we wanted the speedrun to remain fun. After not too much searching, we found a new method that skipped even more of the first chapter. This time, you would skip stasis entirely and go right into the room where you bought the suit. By opening the door again after it deloads, you can manually reload the door and trigger the deload to extend further deloading the elevator we rode up after grabbing Kinesis. From here, you could do yet another extremely precise setup using these cups to jump into the void and open the door. This one had a unique problem where just opening the door wasn't enough. There's actually a trigger in the room that you land in that locks the door. This is to make it impossible to leave the room when buying the suit. But if you hit this trigger before opening the door, it wouldn't open and you would just fall to your death. This made the lineup much more precise than it otherwise needed to be. You had to land at the very front of the door, looking at an angle to avoid the locking trigger. Then, once in bounds, you had to not hit the trigger, or you'd end up having to buy the suit. The upside was that it not only skipped stasis, but also the suit, saving nearly another minute just on animations and elevators alone. And the setup was even more precise than the one prior. On top of that, there were a few skips in the game that required stasis to work, making the skip actually make later sections much slower even though it saved time in the first chapter. Surprisingly, skipping the suit hadn't had much side effects that were negative. In fact, it was actually beneficial since you can breathe infinitely even in vacuums as long as you never upgrade your suit. At a later date, other skips were discovered that mitigated the amount of time lost to not having stasis. There was only one trick that required stasis left, and it was on chapter 6. This skip used a brute to clip you through a wall and was 100% consistent, if you had stasis. 
you could do it without stasis, but it was random. And it took the skip from 100% consistency to about 50, removing stasis. If the brute attacked with his left hand, it would work. And if it attacked with its right, it would not. And we couldn't find any way to manipulate it without using stasis. Once that was figured out, it became worth it to do stasis skip in the run. But that doesn't mean that it was fun. This setup killed so many runs, it was nearly impossible to get a run going. And even if you did manage to hit it, you still had nearly an hour left of the run to do successfully. And about an hour in, you had a trick that saved a whole minute that was literally random. Needless to say, the meta had emerged once again, and it was not particularly fun or competitive. When you can't even get runs going because tricks are so precise, it's hard to enjoy the speedrun. And when an entire minute is decided by pure RNG in a game that comes down to seconds, it kills a lot of the competitive nature of the run. Who the hell wants to grind that? Well, some people did, and certainly almost always someone will, but not many. The run lost a lot of its dedication, and a lot of the community was just kind of done with it. It's hard to get excited about a run that's in such a desperate state. The thing was, everything in the run was really cool and fun besides this one skip. And when I came back to the game after six months or so of a break, wanting to relearn the run so I could submit it to Games Done Quick, I was determined to learn the run and get good at it. But this trick just kicked my ass. I tried for many hours to learn the setups and I practiced a ton, but I just would lose 90% of runs to the first chapter. That's when I said, fuck it, there must be a better way. I am not doing any more runs until I find a better skip. So for about 12 hours straight, I did nothing but test. I tested everything. I found all the checkpoints by the suit, all of the doors, all of the places I could potentially jump from, and I tried lots of things. I got a few to work, but I couldn't make anything actually consistent. Until I found this setup. Using previously gained knowledge for a setup for the deload, I would push Steve into this hallway and use him to deload it after grabbing the plasma cutter. Then I would backtrack to the elevator and jump off onto the roof of the elevator. From here, I would line up with the vertical and horizontal lines with this door frame. Because there's both a horizontal and vertical line, you can get 100% the same setup every single time using the plasma cutter. From here, you run off to the left and pause buffer to door dive into the tripod room. Because the door is really wide, you could fall at an angle that gives you plenty of time to open it. You could almost do it without even pause buffering. This setup was not only easier, but it was much faster as well setting you an extra room forward. And it had the bonus effect of letting you fight the tripod in the void. A funny side effect of this version of the skip that we didn't realize for a few weeks is that it gives you unlimited ammo. The room where you grab the plasma cutter has an enemy that you have to shoot to progress. And because of this, the room gives you unlimited ammo for as long as you're in that room. However, the trigger to take away unlimited ammo is the door on the other side of the room. So by never hitting that door and going right to the end of chapter one, you actually have unlimited ammo for the rest of the game. There's so little combat in the any percent category that we were running at the time that we didn't even notice, even though we had unlimited ammo for several weeks. This discovery completely revitalized the speedrunning scene for this game. What was once a super toxic and precise early game skip was now something that was actually possible to do consistently. It wasn't entirely me, of course. My discovery was off the backs of tons of hours of the entire community put in to make tools, document findings, and explore mechanics. With their help, we were able to save Dead Space from a fate that many games fall. This turned around the accessibility of the run a lot. It was no longer a run that people were terrified to learn, and just in time too, since Sharkat would get the game into Games Done Quick shortly after, greatly expanding the exposure to the game and potentially increasing the amount of runners. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, remember to subscribe. If you really enjoyed, you can support me like these fine folks do over on Patreon, it is the best way to do so. Big thanks to the entire Dead Space Speedrunning community, especially Radish and Sharkat for helping me get footage for this video, and have a beautiful day.